uh, for inviting me to this wonderful workshop. Um, I didn't expect such a big audience, <laughs> such a big, young and active audience. Uh, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> and uh, uh, Ilya and Abhijit <coughs> talk um, many things about uh, not invariance and uh, uh, geometry of uh, not complement. So uh, I'm afraid I have nothing to talk here. But, but I, will, I will try to uh, combine. Speak up. Oh. You cannot hear. Oh, you cannot hear. Oh. Okay. Okay. Ah, <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, um, so I, I I like to combine uh, the uh, not the invariance, uh, quantum invariance, and uh, geometry of uh, not complements, and together with some kind of uh, analysis to uh, study uh, the so-called volume conjecture. And uh, uh, I start with, uh, uh, so this is my uh, uh, plan of the talks uh, of, of today. And uh, so I, so here's, um, you know, uh, Iria already uh, explained uh, the definition of Kampen bracket. And uh, 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 yes, so um, this is the, um, uh, ooh. okay, so. And uh, here's an example of calculation of the trefoil. So uh, if you have three crossings, then uh, by using um, scaling relation, scaling resolution formula, we have eight uh, of uh, here. We have one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight uh, diagrams, diagrams of uh, trivial uh, uh, circles, and uh, then one trivial circle turns into uh, minus a squared minus uh, a to the minus two. So this gives the um, uh, Kaufman bracket of the, this is left-handed trefoil. And uh, the Jones polynomial, to, to define the Jones polynomial, we need orientation for each component. And uh, uh, in my talk, um, I'm, I will focus on nodes, so uh, the, the rise is essentially, uh, the rise essentially doesn't depend on orientations, but uh, it is better to introduce orientation. And to calculate the rise, we, uh, the rise is by definition the number of positive crossing and the minus, uh, minus the negative crossing. So uh, the definition <coughs> of the, the original Jones polynomial, V, is uh, replacing the Kaufman bracket with uh, a to the minus four into Q, and then uh, we need to adjust by the right of the oriented diagram. Here, I put arrow on D to indicate that it is oriented, and if uh, D is without arrow, this is uh, without, the D is uh, without orientation. So um, to define the Kaufman bracket, we don't need orientation, but to define W, we need uh, arrow on it. So, and uh, the V is uh, the Jones polynomial. Uh, um, it is a uh, not invariant. And uh, uh, here's a definition. Here's an example of the Jones polynomial. I think this is the same as uh, Ilya's talk. Um, ah, yes. So this is for the trefoil, and for the figure eight knot, it is. Uh, it is symmetric with respect to the um, power because that figure not is well known to be uh, amphichiral, the, the same as its mirror image. Now, um, the, to define the color Jones, uh, we need Jones when charge reported. Um, it has showed three ways to uh, in define color Jones. One way is to use uh, Jones when charge reported, and the second is to use R matrix, and the fourth is to use cabling formula. And uh, um, Ilya said that I would give uh, a matrix today, but I will postpone it tomorrow or uh, this evening, if uh, um, time, time permits. Anyway, the Jones, when are important, when, ah, so um, 
as yesterday's uh, discussion, I put the number outside the box. But, but I, I think uh, this is uh, OK. So here, uh, we have two strands in the box, and uh, it goes out. So it is, by definition, uh, this diagram. And uh, I, I, I think a uh, clever person can easily uh, calculate that the square of the, uh, the two idempotents are just the single idempotent. And uh, by inductive um, calculation, one can define the uh, jones wetzel idempotent of four k strands by this kind of uh, recursion formula. And uh, the delta k means the uh, Kaufman bracket of the k-fold case uh, jones wetzel idempotent. And uh, yes, it is idempotent, and it is a uh, kind of eigenvector uh, with respect to the um, full twist. And the uh, eigenvalue is given like this. So the color Jones is, by definition, given a dot diagram, we put k parallel strands. So this is the uh, k fold cabling here, but we need to insert uh, k Jones when so are important. And uh, the color Jones, to define the color Jones, we need again, uh, orientation to, to calculate the rise. So we need arrow on D. And uh, here, uh, we put N minus first uh, jones wenzel idempotent to get the N-dimensional color Jones. Uh, because the, uh, here, N indicates the dimension of uh, the irreducible representation of the D-algebra SL2. Ah, yes. So the um, and the original color origin original Jones polynomial corresponds to the standard two dimensional representation. So uh, we need n minus one uh, n minus first uh, parallel of the diagram. And here we replace um, a to the fourth uh, with q, not n to the minus four. This is just a, a small uh, difference between the original Jones and the color Jones. Uh, because uh, in the original Jones, uh, uh, in the definition of the um, Kaufman bracket, if we have a, a trivial knot, uh, um, a circle with no crossing, its value is minus a squared minus a to the minus 2. So we need, and uh, in the quantum definition, uh, we don't uh, like minus sign. So uh, in here, uh, oh, let me see. Sorry, I'm confused. Uh, sorry, forget it. <laughs> sorry. Uh, um, I forgot why. We use, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, we, uh, sometimes we need to be careful about the um, power. W when, you, when you check your calculation with uh, some papers or books, you need to be careful which definition uh, they are using. So uh, it doesn't matter when you calculate the figure knot, but it, it does uh, matter when you calculate, for example, the trefoil. So uh, I will show you some uh, calculations of the color Jones polynomials of uh, first the trefoil. So uh, we start with the original Jones and the three dimensional color Jones and the four dimensional one. And in general, as uh, I showed you yesterday, the nth color Jones is given by this uh, summation formula. And the originally, uh, this formula was uh, given by Rosso, Jones, and uh, inventory, independently by uh, Morton. <coughs> and the uh, for the figure knot, uh, the formula is uh, a more complicated, in a sense complicated. Uh, so the original Jones is given like this, and the third and the fourth. And in general, uh, this formula is given by Kazuo Habiro and uh, independently by Tan Lei. Uh, you see that the uh, 
once again, for any uh, dimension, the color zones for the figure not is symmetric because it is amphichiral. And uh, um, Kazuo Habiro, uh, as I told you uh, yesterday, Kazuo Habiro uh, used uh, skin, linear skin theory very cleverly to get this formula. And if you are interest, interested in, in his method, you can uh, see his original paper or paper by uh, Gregor Masbaum. And uh, Tan Le, uh, he used uh, a matrix method uh, that uh, Ilya uh, told uh, today, and uh, he get the same formula. And I think I can explain Tan Le's method tomorrow uh, after introducing R matrix, uh, precise formula for the R matrix. Now, uh, I'm interested in, so as Ilya told, um, the color Jones, uh, by using cabling formula by Kirby and Melvin, uh, you can imagine that how uh, difficult to compute the color Jones. It grows uh, exponentially. So if you take the uh, fourth color Jones, you need three parallels. So there are, for one crossing, you have nine. And to calculate the fifth, you need 16. So you, you will have more and more uh, cues. So uh, you can imagine it, it will be more and more complicated when n grows. So, uh, so what happens if we look at uh, the nth root of unity? So if we evaluate, if you replace q with the nth root of unity, the n is the same as n here the dimension. Then if we plot the graph of, uh, for the trefoil, then it grows like this. Uh, this is 100, and this is 1,000. <laughs> and if you take log and divide it by n, and it is not so clear, but it goes to 0. And uh, the reason is that the uh, roughly, very roughly speaking, uh, the color zones for the trefoil grows something like polynomially in n. And if we evaluate, uh, replace q with n through divinity, it uh, also grows uh, polynomially in n. So if you take log and divide it by n, uh, log is weaker than n, so it goes to zero. And uh, I, I plot the same thing for uh, the figure eight knot. Uh, when n is 100, ah, it goes to something like infinity. So here's what? 10 to the 14. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, uh, what happens when we take log and divide it by n, it grows it converges, it looks converges to something like 0 0.4 <coughs> something. And I, I will show you later that indeed it uh, converges to some special value. And uh, the reason would be, so here you have product, product and summation. So uh, roughly, very roughly, this, this gives you 2 to the n or 4 to the n, and uh, we sum it over, then it, it gives exponential with respect to n. So the growth is something like exponential. So taking log and divided by n means it measures the growth rate with respect to our exponent. So, uh, so we, we wonder. So I, I, I think um, Ilya said that uh, the two important nodes are figure knot and the trefoil. And the trefoil is no, um, figure not is geometric, and trefoil is not. Okay, so uh, yes, um, I agree. <laughs> so uh, it is good to compare uh, two um, typical knots, trefoil and the figure eight knot. So uh, this says that the log of the Jones over n goes to zero when it is trefoil, and it goes to 
something. It converges to some uh, positive uh, number when it is uh, figure it not. Okay, so uh, I, I I'll tell you what hap what is the difference between ah maybe you know <laughs> the figure not complement has uh, complete hyperbolic structure as um, Abhijit told explained yesterday and for the trefoil it is it has a uh, ciphered fiber structure so it is um, if you say geometric sense then uh, it is something like surface cross S1. So it is not, if you say uh, it is geometric, but it is not three-dimensional geometry. It, it has two-dimensional times one-dimensional geometry. So three-dimensional, in the three-dimensional sense, it is uh, not um, such uh, uh, good, it, it does not have such a good uh, geometric uh, structure. So here uh, we have uh, some conjecture, uh, so-called the volume conjecture. It was, uh, so it says that the, uh, indeed the log of the Carlos Jones over N, where uh, we evaluate the Carlos Jones at the N through the infinity, uh, gives the volume of the complement of the knot. Uh, so in the right hand side, what is the volume? So uh, when not is hyperbolic when it possesses a uh, complete hyperbolic structure, its volume is clear. It's the hyperbolic volume. Then w what it is when n is not hyperbolic? Abjit said that uh, uh, there are three types of knots. One is hyperbolic and one is torus and the other is cable. So cable? Satellite. satellite. Sorry, satellite. Yes. So uh, the meaning is of the right hand side is clear when k is hyperbolic. So uh, how can we define the volume when k is a torus or a satellite? So here's the uh, definition of uh, the volume, our volume. It is, uh, strictly speaking, it is called uh, simplicial volume or uh, Gromov norm. It was introduced first by Gromov. And, uh, uh, Gromov's definition is used uh, is a kind of topological definition, but for convenience, I use another definition. Uh, so it is as follows: um, We first, um, as Abhijit told, uh, we first decompose the knot complement into pieces by using tori, and each piece is either hyperbolic or ciphered fiber, like this, and. Uh, uh, the volume of the knot complement is, by definition, the sum of the hyperbolic volumes of each uh, hyperbolic pieces. Okay. So um, I'll show you uh, some uh, picture in here. So uh, if you have, so this is so-called two-one cable of the figure knot. If there's no crossing here, it is just a two parallel of the hyperbolic knot. But uh, to make it a knot, we need one crossing. So this makes uh, two cable into uh, a knot. So we go uh, twice around the figure knot and makes a knot. Uh, it is called a two-one cable. And uh, you see uh, outside this uh, two-one cable, uh, a red torus uh, going, uh, wrapping the figure knot like this. And if we cut the <coughs> complement of this knot into two by this red torus, the outside is the figure knot complement. Okay? And inside the torus is, so if inside the torus, it doesn't matter whether it is knotted or, oh, but it is out. <laughs> Does it work? Ah, I. I happens? I get it to oh. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, um, okay. Um, so, uh, inside the red torus, it doesn't matter whether the red 
Yes. Oh, okay. So um, anyway, so the uh, inside the torus, it doesn't matter whether the torus is knotted or not. So if we, if we look at the inside the red torus, it looks like this. And uh, <coughs> uh, in, in, the, in the sense of satellite, this is a satellite knot with pattern, this knot, and with companion, this figure knot. Anyway, so the outside of the red torus uh, is the same as the uh, figure knot complement, so it is a, a hyperbolic space. And inside, uh, it can be easily seen that uh, this is a ciphered fiber. Uh, it is, in a sense, um, a circle bundle over, I think it is a disk. So uh, this is um, this is not three-dimensional. So when we calculate the volume, we forget this piece. And so the volume of this 2-1 cable of the figure knot is the same as the volume of the uh, figure knot complement. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so we go back to the uh, formula of uh, statement of the uh, volume conjecture. So the right hand side, the meaning of the right hand side is the volume of uh, volume of the pieces, uh, hyperbolic pieces. And uh, so, OK. Um, <laughs> uh, this conjecture was first uh, proposed by Renat Kashev in 1997. Uh, where he used his invariant, which he denoted by bracket k sub n. And uh, what we proved is that this is Kasev's invariant, nothing but the evaluation of uh, the Carl Jones polynomial. And uh, in 1997, Kashev, uh, oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> in 1997, Kashev uh, gave a uh, conjecture stating that his invariant would give uh, the volume in the case where uh, the knot is hyperbolic. So what we, we, uh, I and Jim Murakami did is first proved that Kashev's invariant is a special case of the color Jones. And second, uh, we extend Kashev's uh, assumption to general knot. So uh, because I am a knot theorist, so I, if we are given the uh, topological invariant of a knot, we think it is given for any knot. Then uh, uh, we considered uh, what is the right hand side in Kashev's conjecture. It would be a volume. So what is a volume for general knot? It should be uh, the simplest volume. So that's what we uh, thought. And uh, um, so uh, I'll skip some and uh, talk about some history. Uh, I'll give the proof for the figure note uh, right now. Uh, but it was given by uh, Tobias Ekholm in 1999. Rem remember that the volume conjecture was published in 2001. So um, <laughs> what happened? So <laughs> John and I were visiting uh, Stockholm, uh, no. Uh, Jules Holm, uh, Mittag Refra Institute in Sweden in 1998 and 1999. And uh, June and I uh, found uh, this uh, fact and uh, proposed uh, the volume conjecture. And Tobias Holm came to my office someday, and now I understand 
the conjecture for the figure eight node. Uh, in, in his paper, Rinat gave a rough sketch of a proof uh, for the volume conjecture in the case of the figure eight node. But it is uh, too rough. Uh, it is not rigorous in mathematical sense. And Tobias uh, read his paper and think and gave uh, a complete uh, mathematical proof for the figure eight node case. And uh, I think, I think in 1990, in spring of 1999, uh, Rinat was in Finland working for uh, Nokia. And <laughs> I, I, I couldn't touch him. And uh, at that time, uh, um, Fadev was also visited uh, Mitta Kulefra. And Fadev was a supervisor of Rinat Kashev. So I asked um, Fadev uh, how to contact with Rinat. And he contacted with Rinat. And we, uh, Rinat and I, and June discussed. And uh, uh, we, 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 we told him that uh, his conjecture is generalized to, uh, 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 to the case where uh, uh, for general note, and uh, I asked, uh, and he he said that that uh, he could uh, prove the conjecture in the case of the torus knot, and he wrote a paper with Tirkonen uh, that the um, in the case of the torus knot, uh, the conjecture is true, and uh, for the torus knot, uh, the volume simply said volume is zero because the complement is cipher fiber. And indeed, uh, Renat Kashev and uh, Tirukonen proved that uh, indeed the color Jones of the torus knot grows only polynomially. So the dog and divided by n gives zero. So that's why it appears before the publication of the volume conjecture. It's 2000, in the end of 20th century. In the end, yes, right. So uh, in China and in Japan, we calculate uh, ages. Th there are two ways to calculate the ages. Uh, in the old-fashioned case, uh, we are one year old when we were born. And uh, the day, the, the next New Year day, we will be two years old. So in that sense, the volume conjecture is two centuries old. <laughs> 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 so he was born in 1999, spring. So anyway, so um, ah, right. So I will show you uh, the proof by uh, Tobias Ekholm uh, for the case of the figure knot. Uh, because we know. Uh, close formula for the figure knot. Uh, luckily, it is just a single summation. As you imagine, uh, as um, Ilya told, in general, this is a, uh, many products of many, many sums of many products. But luckily, in the case of the figure knot, it is just a single uh, summation. And uh, we will replace Q with the nth root of unity, and the formula becomes like that. Uh, here, F is just the four times sine squared of this one. You can see, easily see from here, okay? And uh, so uh, this is the graph of the F function with respect to, uh, so, um, so this should be K. So because four sine squared, so it, it grows up in the middle and then it grows down. And uh, what happens to the product? So we, we call G uh, for the product up to uh, J. Then so uh, we start at 1, and then we multiply by the number smaller than 1. So it goes down first until here, 9 over 6. And from 9 over 6, it grows up because we multiply by the number bigger than one. And up to 
4n over 6, it grows. And uh, after here, it goes down because we multiply by the number smaller than 1. Okay. So it, it goes down and up. And uh, it takes the maximum at 5, 9 over 6. Okay. And, uh, okay, so. And uh, again, luckily, uh, everything is positive. So there's no cancelling, just summing uh, over uh, positive numbers. And uh, it takes, g takes maximum at uh, 4, 6 of 9, of, of, of n. So uh, because everything is positive, so and uh, jn is just a summation of positive numbers. So uh, it is, jn is bigger than the maximum. Because it, we, jn, to get to jn, we need to add something more. And because this one is the maximum, so j is smaller than n times the maximum. Okay, we have this, these two inequalities. Then, uh, we take log, the inequality doesn't change, divide it by n, the inequality doesn't change, so we have this, and take the limit. Uh, I hope everybody knows that the limit of log n over n goes to zero. So the both hand sides are equal. So uh, how do you call it? Sandwich. So uh, the limit is just the limit of <coughs> this uh, g function. And remember that g is a, uh, is a product of f function. Uh, f is here. OK, so and uh, log turns out to be sum. Yes, so the, the color Jones, log of color Jones over n is nothing but uh, limit of log of g over n. And log turns product into summation. And uh, yeah, and this is just Riemann integral. And uh, if you attended uh, Abhijit's lecture yesterday, this is nothing but the um, Lobachevsky function. So Lobachevsky function is R. I think I wrote it here. Yes. Uh, so um, this is just a Lobachevsky function of uh, 5 pi over 6, and which is this value, 0 0.32. Uh, and in, in the graph that I show, showed you, uh, it looks like goes to 0 0.4 some, something, but it is up to 100. So I I if you calculated it, it to 1,000 or 10,000, it goes to 0 0.32 something. You can, I, I think you can usually check it by computer. Um, yes. So uh, what is that? And <laughs> you know the answer. <laughs> this gives the hyperbolic volume of something. Uh, I will uh, quickly review some uh, properties of the Lobachevsky function. The, 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 the graph of the function is, looks something like this, right? And here's zero and pi. And it is, it is an odd function, and it has period pi. And there is some a kind of, uh, I, I don't know how to call it. Um, so uh, the second, this one can be easily uh, proved by using double angle, angle formula of sine. I didn't know the. Uh, terminology before, because this is high school mathematics. Um, <laughs> I, I learned uh, mathematical terms after uh, graduation, so <laughs> I don't know how to call. I didn't know how to call it in, because it is uh, too uh, elementary. Anyway, uh, everybody knows this formula, and take log, and uh, integrate uh, gives this uh, formula quickly. And then uh, it turns out that the uh, Lobachevsky function is this one is just minus three halves of lambda of pi over three. So uh, 
if we multiply by 2, bar, two pi of this limit, uh, this is just 6 times lambda Lobachevsky of pi over 3. This is just a 2 times 3 lambda. Is just, uh, ah, I can <laughs> skip it. Uh, this is just uh, uh, the volume of, uh, yes, this is just the volume of the figure not complement. And so, uh, yes, uh, this gives the um, uh, complete proof for the volume conjecture in the case of the figure not. Any questions? This is something like a bit more than high school mathematics, I hope. <laughs> so, uh, on the other hand, uh, I think I can tell you this one on Friday. Uh, uh, in the case of the trefoil knot, uh, we can prove that its limit is zero, and it was proved by Kasher and Tilkone. So that's, uh, this is the proof for the uh, case of the trefoil. So we have proved in the case of the figure knot and in the case of the trefoil, the volume conjecture is true. And uh, tomorrow I will tell you, uh, I will introduce R matrix, precise formula for the R matrix, and uh, how to calculate the color Jones by using R matrix. And then uh, I will uh, tell you uh, how uh, or why uh, we believe that the conjecture is true in the case of the hyperbolic knots. So, um, and uh, uh, I will write down the R matrix formula and then uh, show you it looks something like uh, dialogarism. And the dialogarism uh, is, um, uh, gives uh, volume of um, a hyperbolic uh, ideal uh, tetrahedron. So, uh, so um, that's why uh, we uh, think that the uh, volume conjecture is true, at least for the uh, I forget, not the case. Uh, no, 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 in the uh, hyperbolic not the case. And on Friday, I will show some uh, complicated uh, calculation in the case of the torus knot and uh, how uh, different the asymptotic behavior of the color Jones uh, from uh, the case of the uh, hyperbolic knots. And uh, uh, it, uh, the, the, in the asymptotic of the uh, uh, torus knot case, we will see uh, representation of pi 1 into SL2 uh, also uh, involved. So um, I think it is uh, interesting uh, from the viewpoint of uh, representation to SL2C. Anyway, so in the last slide, I will show you how much is known about the volume conjecture. These two uh, are proved in the uh, 20th century. And uh, for the iterated torus knot, uh, it is a uh, um, cable of uh, the figure knot, not cable, a satellite of a satellite, sorry, satellite of the torus knot by using torus knot. So you see that uh, uh, if you go along the torus knot, you will see another torus knot in here very small. And uh, you can see uh, um, separating, no, not separating, but uh, uh, JSJ decomposition along the um, bigger torus knot. So it is, uh, we, we have <coughs> non-trivial JSJ decomposition and the outside of the torus is a torus knot and inside the torus it is again another torus knot. So uh, in the JSJ decomposition, this is cyphered fiber plus cyphered fiber. So uh, the volume of the knot complement is zero. So indeed, uh, Roland van der Veen proved that the uh, color Jones taking log divided by n uh, goes to zero in this case. And uh, the next case is uh, proved by Hao Chang. Uh, this is uh, a different satellite. We have trefoil knot and uh, we use pattern uh, this uh, kind of clasp 
it is a white double of the torus knot. And in this case, if you, ha if you take JSJ decomposition, outside the torus is the same as the torus knot is a ciphered fiber, but inside <coughs> it is known to be hyperbolic. So this case is uh, the case of ciphered fiber plus hyperbolic. And the Chen proves that this coin, uh, they, they, they are uh, volume conjecture is true. So the limit gives the volume of the um, hyperbolic piece inside the torus. And the other way, we have a uh, figure not outside and inside to K cable, as uh, I shown, uh, as I showed before. Uh, so this case was approved by Tan Dei and An Chang. And uh, there are uh, several hyperbolic knots, uh, five, two, and uh, three, six crossings knot. And uh, the five, two knot case was proved by Kashaif and Yokota, and uh, also by Tomotada Otsuki. And he, uh, Tomotada, uh, used a so-called Poisson summation formula uh, to, uh, I, I, I think it is a new technique to prove the volume conjecture in the case of the 5-2 knot. And with Yokota, uh, Otsuki proved uh, the conjecture for, the, for these cases. I, I think uh, Otsuki's method is very effective, uh, but complicated. So he used uh, so-called Poisson summation formula to change so in this case, we need uh, two summations. In the case of the figure knot, we, we only have one summation. But in this case, uh, the summation is two, and th this is triple summations. So uh, he changed the two summations into double integral, and th in this case, triple integrals, and use some uh, method called saddle point method to prove the conjecture. So these two, these four cases, uh, the argument is very, very complicated. Okay, so, um, okay, yeah, that's all. Thank you. No, no infinite families of hyperbolic links. No, no, no. I, I thought Roland also did some tables of sort of augmented. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, you're right. Um, and isn't that the infinite family? Yeah, yeah, infinite family, yes. Yeah, and, uh, so this one not. Um, uh, um, um, yes, um, Roland, uh, so I, I'm focusing on knots, yeah. but in the case of links, uh, yeah. Roland proves uh, something more uh, involving uh, hyperbolic pieces. Yes. Uh, thank you.